Before you begin using your Vapor Pro XL, let's make sure you've received everything on your packing list. In most cases, an accessory kit will be included. The accessory kit for the Vapor Pro XL includes a power cord that meets the requirements of the country in which the instrument will be used, three feet of 1 8 inch by 1 quarter inch clear tubing, one box of one microliter micro caps, one set of tweezers, one inline desiccator kit, one kit of testing assemblies including 10 vial caps, 10 septa for sample vials, and 10 sample vials, one bag of 50 septa, one stylus, and one hose barb fitting. If you are missing any of these items or have questions about these or any other parts or accessories you may have received, please contact Amatech Arizona Instrument or your local representative for assistance. Once you have confirmed that you have all of the necessary accessories, please make sure the instrument is located on a firm, level surface that is free from vibration. It should also be away from fans, heating or air conditioning vents, drafty windows or doorways, human environments, and direct sunlight. To power up the instrument, First, ensure that the power switch located on the back of the instrument is switched to the off position. Insert the rectangular end of the included power cord firmly into the matching port on the back of the instrument and plug the other end into an isolated power outlet with dedicated electrical power, but don't turn the instrument on yet. With the instrument successfully plugged in but not turned on, it's time to either connect a dry air or nitrogen source along with the desiccator. This helps ensure that the gas is dry before it enters the flow system of the Vapor Pro XL. If the location where the instrument is to be used is plumbed with nitrogen or compressed air, or if you plan on using a compressed gas cylinder, use the clear tubing from the accessory kit to connect the dry gas source to the carrier gas inlet port on the desiccator. Next, use a second piece of clear tubing to connect the carrier gas outlet port of the desiccator to the flow inlet port on the back of the instrument. For both of these options, be sure to adjust the pressure to the instrument so that it is between 17 and 22 PSI, with 20 PSI being the preferred pressure. If you're using a compressed gas cylinder, a two-stage regulator is recommended. If you are not using one of the previously mentioned options, the third option is to use the Amatech Arizona Instrument Dry Air Generator, or DAG for short. For this option, connect the dry air generator to its power cord and plug it in, making sure that the power switch is in the off position. Next, use the yellow tubing from the dry air generator kit to connect the dry air generator to the carrier gas inlet port on the desiccator. Whenever you are using a dry air generator, make sure that the yellow tubing is used here. This type of tubing is more permeable, allowing moisture to escape through the tube before the air reaches the desiccant. If the yellow tubing is accidentally used to connect the desiccator to the instrument, ambient moisture could permeate the tubing, enter the flow system of the instrument, and cause erroneously high moisture readings. Use a piece of clear tubing to connect the carrier gas outlet port on the desiccator to the flow inlet port on the back of the instrument. The Vapor Pro XL can connect to a computer, the ZSP150 external balance, and Amatech Arizona Instrument approved printers, as well as other accessories. It has an ethernet port, as well as USB type A and B ports. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will be connecting the Amatech Arizona Instrument External Balance, or ZSP150. Connecting to or using an external balance allows test results to be delivered in PPM or percent water, not just micrograms of water. If you are not interested in obtaining PPM or percent moisture results, you may skip this step. To connect the VaporPro XL to the Amatech Arizona Instrument ZSP150 external balance, use the included 9-pin serial cable to plug the balance into the port labeled TCI slash balance on the back of the instrument. Now that everything is connected properly, it's time to turn on the instrument. 
flip the power switch on the back of the instrument to the on position. If a balance is connected, turn it on as well. When the instrument power is on, the screen will momentarily display the firmware revision number and the instrument serial number. After the instrument boots up, the home screen will appear. The main screen displays the length and result of the last test, the previous and next test program, the current oven temperature, the test temperature for the next test, and the current system status. When the warm-up is complete, the text will change to say, ready to test. At the bottom of the screen, you can see buttons labeled menu, program, test, and graph. Menu will take you to the main menu of the instrument, while program takes you to a list of programs that have already been added to the instrument. The test button is used to begin the next test, and graph shows you the graph of the currently running test or previously run test if there is no test currently running. The instrument has a normal flow for idle and testing and a higher flow for vial purge at the test start. The normal flow should be checked upon installation of the instrument and adjusted as needed. Weekly checks after installation are recommended. In order to check the flow, first verify that the pressure of the carrier gas being supplied to the instrument is between 17 and 22 PSI and that the instrument has been powered on for at least 20 minutes with the gas connected. Once those conditions are met, press the menu button on the main screen. In the menu, go to Service Menu, then select Sensor Readings. Make sure that the following is true on this screen. N2 flow is on. This represents the carrier gas flow and is applicable whether you are using nitrogen or compressed air. High flow is off. Flow is 95 plus or minus 5 milliliters per minute. Touch the gray area next to N2 and high flow to toggle them on or off if needed. If your flow falls outside the range of 90 to 100 milliliters per minute, you will need to adjust the flow. Follow the instructions in section 18.6 of your VaporPro XL manual or contact Amatec Arizona Instrument or your local representative for assistance. Now that you are well acquainted with your CompuTrack VaporPro XL, you are ready to move on to the next step. For more CompuTrack tutorial videos, check out the playlist linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about your CompuTrack VaporPro XL, please contact Amatec Arizona Instrument or your local representative using the links in the description below. We look forward to serving all of your moisture, solids, and ash needs. If you like this video, let us know by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Have a topic in mind for a future video? Send us your suggestion by visiting azic.com contact.